Okay. So here is with displacement map and without displacement map. So that's what you saw the bump map. See, we have a more organic feel down here. Again, this is totally up to you. Um, like I said, this is good for making buildings, uh, you know, like skyscrapers with multiple windows. But um, the edge here, as far as details, can change depending on the feature displacement settings. And I have this mesh set for 4222. The bars usually stay together. But if I were to bring this down to say six and three, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So, and as you can see, uh, this is with uh, a low setting for feature displacement, sample rates, initial and extra, and then this is with uh, 53 to 26. So it does make a difference. Again, this stuff is meant for for things that are very decently far away, where no one's going to creep up to the displacement map and see the, the, the little details and uh, and you're going to get banding. That's the only other uh, bad thing about uh, displacement maps is where your texture is. You're not, there's no UVs laid out here. Uh, this is just going to just band as you can see as far as the texture itself. Now what if you want to do occlusion for something like this? Well, that's pretty easy because uh, most people will be like, well, I can't do occlusion for this because occlusion is just going to do the, the original mesh. So let's go ahead and look at our uh, network here and take a look in our render layers. I'll just go ahead and create a layer and I'll just grab everything and add that to that layer and make another layer and then I'll just grab the geometry. Uh, I really only need the first column. So this first layer we'll call it diffuse and leave it as is and then the second layer we'll call occlusion. Now usually when you create an occlusion pass, uh, you just say right-click, presets, occlusion. But that just assigns a surface shader attached to an MIB ambient occlusion node, but we have to manually create that. So to create that, I'm going to go under my uh, Maya nodes. I'm going to grab a surface shader, and I'll go ahead and rename that the occlusion node, or whatever. And we'll go ahead and uh, create our own manually created ambient occlusion node. So all I have to do is go under mental ray and under the uh, texture, just find MIB inclusion. Little mouse drag that, say default. Uh, set its sample settings to say something like 32. Its max distance to something like 6. And this is going to take this displacement node as well. So I'm going to grab this node and grab this node, holding down shift, and graph the input outputs so that I get my shader group node, which is right here. And I'm going to middle mouse drag this displacement map to the displacement map material so that this gets a displacement map as well. Not the bump map or anything like that, but just the displacement map. So now I just take this material and under my render layer, right click and say, Assign existing material to occlusion node. So let's go ahead and render that out and see what we get. And we get what looks to be a very nasty render. Again, um, you'll see like a stair stepped effect going on here. And again, this has all, all to do with the uh, sample. Um, if you're far enough away, you won't notice this. You could uh, take this layer, blur it a little bit in Photoshop, and multiply it over the uh, diffuse pass. But the diffuse pass looks pretty good. And again, it just has this more organic feel and really makes uh, environment stuff for reels look really, really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause this and do one more render uh, at a little bit higher resolution. All right, looking really good. Um, in Photoshop, I just took the occlusion layer and uh, copied it on top and just put on multiply just to add that extra depth. Again, what's really cool about this is uh, you can actually keyframe animate the multiplier node to create animation of displacement on objects as well, so keep that in mind. So I just hope you enjoy this uh, tutorial, and uh, thanks for listening.